Welcome to this Fidelity Pointwise tutorial where we're going to discuss some of the basic concepts that you're going to need to get past the blank screen once you launch the software. I have in front of you the basic Pointwise screen as you can actually see it has several elements that we're going to be discussing in this video. Usually when you start a measuration job you're going to start with the CAT data. Now you can create the CAT data in Fidelity Pointwise or in most cases, you can bring that CAT data to Fidelity Pointwise in the form of a CAT file. If you look at the Fidelity Pointwise user manual, you're going to notice that we support many different formats for bringing CAT data into the software. In my particular case, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to open a Pointwise file that already has different elements in it. It has grid entities, it has CAT data, and so on. So I'm going to go to File open and I have a quadcopter file in here that I'm gonna go ahead and open. The file has opened and as you can see it has as mentioned several elements already present in there. This is a completed surface grid, volume grid is all in here. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at the GUI. Uh, the first thing that you're going to notice in the GUI is the big screen that is in front of you. Uh, this screen is where you're going to visualize all your entities that you have in your current instance of Fidelity Pointwise. So in this case, like I said, we have grid entities, we have database entities, and so on. This is called the display window. To the left of the display window, we have uh, the panels that you can actually see. Uh, they have three tabs that are open by default. Those are the list layers and defaults tab. You can close these tabs with the little X that you're going to find there. However, since these are going to be used all the time, it is recommended that you keep them open if at all possible. So the first one that you have in there is the list tab. The list tab is where you're going to see all your different entities in your current instance of the software listed in here. As you can see, I have a single block, blocks in pointwise terminology, those are volume grids. I also have domains. In pointwise terminology, domains are 2D grid entities. Those are my surface grids. I have in here 118 connectors. The connectors in pointwise terminology, they are 1D grid entities. Those are my connectors. And I also have listed in here sources. Sources are the entities that you're going to use if you want to refine your surface grid or your volume grid in areas of interest. In this case, I don't have any sources. Next, we have the layers tab. As you can see, I have different layers going on here. So it is recommended that you kind of like divide or separate the different parts of your complex geometry into different layers. This will allow you to turn on and off different parts of your grid to make it easier to work. And this is especially useful when you're working with very complex grid entities. So in my case, I, you can see I have several layers going on in here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the display of my database entities so we can see what the different layers do. I'm going to go to View, Show, Database. And you can see in the display window now my database surfaces those CAT surfaces are now displayed. So in the layers, you can simply come here, just double click on one of them, and you can see that it's going to automatically turn on that layer and turn off everything else. In this case, that layer that I'm looking at, which is layer zero, contains only the surfaces of the central portion of my quadcopter. Another thing to notice is right here, you have a green chevron, and that indicates that this layer, layer zero, is currently the current working layer. So what is the current working layer? That is the layer where any entities that I could create right now are going to be assigned to. I can also just start turning on and off different layers. And as you can see, those entities that are associated with that layer are going to be shown in the display window. In this case, layer 50 has the propellers and layer 100 has the arms that connect to the propeller. And again, I can turn that on and off. Then I have other um, entities or layers right here that actually are going to contain my grid entities. That is the surface grid entity. You can see right now I'm visualizing everything. 
database surfaces with grid entities. So it might become a little bit hard to see what's going on. So one thing you can do, of course, is turn off the layers that contain those database entities so you can have a better view of your grid entities. Again, I can just double click on there to make this layer 200 the current working layer. And I can have a very nice clear view of my surface grid. If I uh, turn on layer 210, you can see that's the one that contains the actual volume grid. And if I zoom out, you can see that I have kind of like a shoebox geometry that contains my block or my volume grid. So that's the, the layers tab. Next stop is going to be the default tab. And this is where you're going to set up all your defaults in Fidelity Pointwise. So I can set defaults for connectors, as you can see right here, for structure, domains and blocks, unstructured domains and blocks, high order at attributes, and for the size field. To give you an idea of what you can do with defaults, if, for example, I set the dimension of my connectors, which again are the 1D grid entities to, let's say, 50, if I now go and I create a new connector, that connector is going to have a dimension of 50. So the defaults actually affect the entities that are created after those defaults have been set. You can also see in the GUI that if you look right below the display window, you have the messages window. This messages window, I can just left click on it and just like move it around, double click and just put it back in place. The messages window is where PointWise is gonna gonna talk to you. Basically, is what PointWise is gonna use anytime he has to tell you something about whatever procedure you're currently doing. So I always recommend keeping the messages window on at all times so you can see what is going on. Another thing that I forgot to mention with the panels is again you can just left click on it and just drag it around and just put it somewhere else and then let go of the left mouse button once you get to the position of interest and I'm going to do it again and just move it to the left. Once I find it in the right position that I like, I just let go of the left mouse button and the panel is going to be put in that particular place. We also have all the toolbars. You can add more toolbars. You can turn off some toolbars. You can add elements or buttons to the different toolbars. So I do recommend that you check the Fidelity Pointwise user manual to see all the different options that you have for the different toolbars. But one thing that I want to show you right here is if you look at the different toolbars, they have little dots. And basically, those are going to be handlers. If you put your mouse pointer on those little dots and then you just left click on it, you can again drag the toolbar and just place it somewhere else. So you can actually customize what the GUI looks like for your particular needs. If you keep on looking down here, another element that we have in the pointwise GUI is this one right here, which is the status bar. The status bar is going to present pretty useful information. You do have in the status bar a couple of progress bars right here that are going to give you an idea of where you are in your particular process that you're actually doing with Fidelity pointwise. You also have the current grid type, in this case is structure. This icon right here is going to show you the current view type, which in this case is set to ortho normal by default. You also have the current CAE dimension, which is in this case set to 3D, meaning I can create volume grids. There are two options for the CAE dimension, 2D and 3D. And last but not least, you have right there Fidelity. That is my current CAE solver. Fidelity Pointwise supports a large number of CA solvers that you can use to export your grids on those particular formats. So if you go to the CAE Select Solver option right here, you can see these are all the current solvers that we have available. I'm going to click OK. The last element that I would like to show you in the GUI are, of course, the different menu options that you have up here. So you have File, Edit, and View, and so on. One thing that I want to mention here is if you click in one of those, you can actually see that you're going to have all the options available in that menu are going to be displayed for you. Depending on the kind of entities that you have in your current instance of Fidelity Pointwise and the kind of entities that you currently have selected, are the options are going to be enabled or disabled in each one of these menu options. 
Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you want to use a particular option and you see that it's disabled, if you place your mouse pointer on top of it, you can actually see that a little tooltip is going to show up telling you why that particular option is disabled. For example, in this case, the split command is disabled because no entities are actually selected. So keep that in mind. Next up is showing you how you can actually do some view manipulation in PointWise. The basic view manipulation that you're going to be doing all the time is zoom in and zoom out. The easy way to do that is with the central wheel or, or the scroll wheel in your mouse. And as you can see, you can zoom in. I always recommend people not to be afraid to zoom in very, very close to particular parts of your geometry of interest to see exactly what is going on. Let's say, for example, I want to look at this particular section of one of the plates. You can actually go there with the scroll wheel, like I mentioned before, or you can simply press down the shift key and uh, drag a box. So I'm pressing the shift key, the central mouse button or the scroll wheel, and then defining, dragging down to define that particular box. If I let go, you can actually see that pointwise is going to zoom to that particular location. In the same way, I can use the shift key and the middle mouse button and drag up. You can see that my mouse pointer now looks like a magnifying glass with the minus sign. So that means if I let go, I'm going to be zooming out. If you are somewhere over here, for example, I'm using my scroll wheel now, and you want to very quickly be able to visualize your entire grid, you can simply click or push the F2 key, and that is going to fit all your current entities in the display window. Last thing I would like to show you in this particular tutorial is how to select things. As I mentioned at the beginning, in this particular case, we have different entity types going on. We have blocks, domains, connectors. We also have database entities and so on. So how do we select things? When you're talking about selection, the first concept that you have to keep in mind is the concept of masks. We have different masks in PointOS that will allow you to filter what kind of entities can actually be selected. So the masks look like this. This is the mask toolbar. You can actually uh, have it located here or located somewhere else if you have reconfigured your pointwise GUI. You can actually see, I can click this top mask right here to turn on or off all the masks at once. You can also see that we have masks for blocks, domains, connectors, database entities, sources, and database boundaries. We also have masks for spacing constraints and last but not least, groups. In my particular case, all the masks right now are on. So if I place my mouse pointer somewhere in my screen, I can actually select many things with the mouse pointer in that particular location. Now, to be able to loop over the different entities that I can select, I can simply push the space bar and then pointwise will actually loop over all the things that you can actually select at the moment with the current setting of the masks and with the current position of the mouse pointer. Let's assume, for example, I'm interested in selecting only domains. So what I would actually do is come here, turn off all the masks, and just turn on the mask to select just domains. Then I'm going to go and put my mouse pointer in about the same position. And now you can see I can still press the space bar to loop over the different entities that I can select. But you can see that my options are actually reduced now and I can only select just particular domains. So that is one way in which you can actually select entities directly from the display window. You can also select entities directly from the list panel if you want to come here and select different entities. I can push the control key and select multiple entities all at once. The same concept goes if I actually select things directly on the display window. If I push the control key, I'm going to be adding to my current selection, as you can see over there. You can, for example, if I want to select all my domains, simply click on the header right here, less mouse button, click on that, and uh, all your domains in this particular case are going to be selected. Let's clear my selection by clicking on some empty space on my display window. And I'm going to zoom out 
And uh, another thing that I would like to show you is how to define a selection box. Again, keep in mind that at this point, my mask is defined to select only domains. So one thing I can do is push or click on my left mouse button and define a selection box by just dragging it. Now, what is going to happen in this particular case, again, I'm pushing just the left mouse button and dragging the mouse to define my selection box. If I let go, every single domain in this case that is touching that selection box is going to be selected like so. So pretty much everything gets selected. Now, what happens if I want to select things are only inside the selection box? For example, let's assume that I want to select only the domains that are part of my quadcopter. So you're going to do the same procedure, basically, with your mask correctly set up. I'm going to press the Shift key, and then I'm going to left mouse button and define my selection box. So what is going to happen in this case when I let go is that only those domains that are entirely inside the selection box will get selected, like so. And that is an easy way to basically localize to your selection to those entities that you really want to select. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you so much for your attention.